Daniel Alicorn is, the, um, is a uh, short story writer and novelist and author of the new novel, At Night We Walk in Circles, which is uh, being given favorable comparisons to uh, John Steinbeck and uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Welcome, Daniel. It's great to be here. You were uh, born in Lima, Peru, but raised in the U.S. from, uh, from the age of three. So are you a Latin American writer, an American writer? Yeah, you know, it's not a question that I really ask myself. I, I think that I've, I've gotten to a point where I sort of just am both of those things, and I'm comfortable saying that. Uh -huh. I, I, I think of myself as a Latin American author who happens to write in English and as an American novelist who happens to write about Latin America. Uh -huh. And, you know, the United States is big enough and the Latino population is, is uh, large enough and diverse enough and complex enough to, I think, have spaces like that. Do you have uh, readers in Peru? A lot. Yeah? Possibly more than here. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> they, they accept you as a, as a Peruvian novelist even though you raised here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, you've chosen to write mostly about South America, correct? Thus far, you yeah. know, I think, I think I have uh, a lot of plans and a lot of things that interests me, and, and that may change. Uh -huh. But yeah, so far the first three, uh, three books have been pretty much uh, Latin American books. Uh -huh. you, uh, you emerged with a bang. You were uh, named uh, one of the top uh, 20 writers under 40 by The New Yorker, and you were similarly uh, acknowledged by Granta. Uh, did that um, open doors for you, or did it raise expectations? Uh, both. You know, the, the expectations thing, I, I don't really feel that. I feel like um, no one is more demanding of me or expects more from my work than I do. Uh -huh. So in the end, you know, the idea of, of, uh, of raised expectations or pressure or those things, you know, I, I put plenty of pressure on myself, so I don't really need or I don't really feel any other stuff. But certainly it opened doors. I mean, being published in New Yorker, you know, helps in, in getting that stamp of approval certainly helps. Um, at night we walk in circles. Um, what was the genesis of that? Is it based on any recent events, or is it purely a work of uh, your imagination? <coughs> I mean, a, a novel has lots of points of origin. Um, the primary uh, uh, relationship, or one of the, the most important relationships in the novel, is the, the there's the distance in age uh, between two brothers, one of whom was born in the United States, and one of them w whom was born in in, uh, in this unnamed South American country. Um, and that accident of birth, of one uh, person having, you know, the access to a U.S. passport, U.S. citizenship, with all that that implies, and the other one without that, uh, that was one of the initial spark uh, sparks for the novel. That was one of the things that I thought about because that happens to be the relationship that I have with my older sisters, where they were born in in Baltimore, and then I was born in Peru, and we moved back to the United States, and I eventually got citizenship. But uh, you know, I just sort of did a thought experiment: what would it have been like? What impact would it have, on, have had on my life if we hadn't moved back. My sisters would have left because Peru was in shambles in, in the 80s, and I would have been unable to leave, at least immediately. And then just as a thought experiment, working it out from there. So what impact would that have had on the psychology, of, on my psychology? And then eventually I transposed that to a character named Nelson. Do you think that your um, fairly unusual um, Geographical orientation, having been born in Peru and raised in the United States, does that give you a unique perspective on on both places and both cultures? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it uh, being kind of a quasi outsider or an outsider with a certain amount of access is is a is a useful uh, place from which to observe a culture. I mean, in, in Peru, you know, I, I I speak Spanish like a Peruvian. I I know Lima very well. Um, I, uh, you know, participate in the cultural life of the city and, and the country, and um, but still, I, since I don't live there and I wasn't raised there, certain things that Limeños think of as normal, I arrive and I look at them like, oh no, that's not normal, and um, and it's helpful. It's helpful to have those fresh eyes. I think it has allowed me to to uh, to recognize certain things as interesting as potential stories, as um, as places from which to begin, uh, you know, some kind of narrative pursuit that maybe locals just hadn't, hadn't uh, appreciated. Well, you were not only uh, raised in the United States, you were raised in the Deep South, Birmingham, mm -hmm. Alabama. Um, are you influenced by Southern culture or Southern literature? Well, yes, and yes, I, I mean, you know, it's impossible to be an American writer and not uh, be influenced by Faulkner and, uh, and not um, 
appreciate the great Southern tradition of storytelling. So certainly, I mean, I, I don't think of myself as a Southern writer. Um, uh, I don't think of myself as a necessarily um, emerging from that tradition, but I'm, I'm certainly influenced by it. Tell us a little bit more about At Night We Walk in Circles. What, what gave it that jump from an intriguing idea to uh, a narrative that, that could sustain you for the time that it took you to write? Seven years is how long it took me to write that book. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I, I got to know this character, Nelson, and I wrote you know, three or four, 400 pages about him um, in a failed attempt to, to get at, at, at his story. I threw it all out and I started over and I, I, um, I really wanted to go deep into his world and he's an actor. Um, he uh, has been sort of spinning his wheels waiting for this visa. He joins up with a theater troupe, a uh, legendary theater troupe called Diciembre and goes off on tour into the mountains with his hero, his, his, this person that he, he admires a great deal named Henry Nunez. Henry Nunez is a, f a very famous old playwright, older playwright, um, who was imprisoned uh, during the war for a very controversial play. And uh, when they, they do a revival of this play, go off into the countryside, and they run headlong uh, into Henry's past. And, uh, and really it's a story about the collision of the past and the present, and Nelson is the one who's most affected by this collision. You get a lot of humor in this book. I hope so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mean, I, I think it's important uh, to have, uh, uh, you know, a certain amount of, of humor. I think it's, uh, there is a lot of absurdity in, in, in the world, and if you're blind to that, um, then you're going to suffer yeah. a lot. Yeah. And humor and tragedy go hand in hand. Yes, often, yeah. often. Yeah. Yeah. The funny stuff makes the sad stuff sadder. Yeah. Um, are, are you accepted as a Latin American writer in Peru? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. I think so. I mean, you'd have to ask Peruvians, but but yeah, my, in my experience, I am. There's no uh, resentment or protest because you write in English. No, you know, I get I get people Peruvians come to my readings all the time and are always so proud. Mm -hmm. You know, I get a real nationalist sort of embrace, um, and I I I gotta say I. I I find it very moving. I find it very, very emotional to um, to get that kind of reception and that kind of love is it's incredible. Um, but yeah, I mean, people take their pictures with me all the time because not because they've read me, but just because I'm Peruvian. Yeah, that must be great to have um, you know ap approval there and also approval here. I mean, you you widely reviewed, almost always favorably. Uh, I mean, it's it's better to get nice reviews than bad reviews <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I've gotten bad reviews too. I know what that's like. Yeah. You know what? I don't. I don't really care. Yeah. I don't really care. I mean, all the batteries I've ever gotten, they don't really bother me. I mean, I haven't, I, I haven't gotten a ton. Maybe that's why I can say that. But <laughs> You do some work in Spanish, though, right? I do. Uh, my wife and I uh, and a couple of partners started a project called Radio Ambulante. Um, in where, and yes, I read in Spanish there. It's basically a, a storytelling uh, journalism podcast uh -huh. for all of Latin America. Um, is this your... This is not your first visit to Miami, is it? No. Yeah. No, I've been to Miami many times. Yeah, yeah. Many times. What's your take on Miami? You like it? Uh, you can't wait to get away? Uh. You know, uh, I think that there's the surface uh, vision of Miami, uh, which I think everyone agrees is detestable. And uh -huh. then there's th probably the real Miami, which if you spend time here, you get to know it, and it's uh -huh. much more interesting than it first appears, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen both. Uh, the touristy South Beach, Delano Hotel, you know, silicone breasts and, you know, $30 daiquiris, you know, is utterly boring to me. Um, but, you know, any city that has a lot of immigrants uh, has something going on. And, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. part of Miami, where I've been staying this last week, has been great. Yeah, yeah, I live here and I, when I can see that, I feel like a tourist. I have to go looking for it, you know, the... That part that I just yeah, mentioned. Part, yeah, yeah, no one, no one. I mean, if you live here, it's it's like going to Times Square. If you live in New York, why would you? Right, do that? exactly. Why would exactly. you do that to yourself? You know. Exactly. <laughs> well, Daniel, thank you, thank Daniel, thank you so much for uh, joining us this morning, and uh, welcome thank, to Miami. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay.